DEI Decoded is, in APAC is a new research report that has just been released by Fleshman Hilliard, the public relations consulting firm. Joining us now to talk about the assessment of why and how DEI matters to the general public across the region is Kitty Lee, the Deputy General Manager of Fleischmann Hilliard, involved with this report. Kitty, welcome to you to Singapore Saturday morning from Hong Kong. Thank you, Glenn. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. Well, I have to say diversity, equity, and inclusion has always been important. It's just in recent years, people become more aware of it. So as a communication firm, we always got questions like, what can you do for us? What, what strategy can you assist us in terms of communications? Mm. But at heart, we, we really need some data to find out what's happening. We just don't give away strategy recommendation likely, but we, we want to find out what's going on, what are the needs. That's the, the main reason why we conduct this um, 5,000 respondent survey last year across Asia Pacific. Well, I mean, it's a very detailed survey, Kitty, which we'll get into. But just for the benefit of our listeners, just briefly explain what diversity, equity and inclusion actually means in the workplace and why it's so important now, more so than ever. Well, everyone is individual. Everyone has different needs. And especially what we have gone through in recent years and in history, um, we have different backgrounds, we have different ethnicity. We have, well, we have different genders, of course, and we, we have different status. So when we work together, um, coming from so different background, um, we have different perception, we have different knowledge level. But the most interesting thing is the diversity can sparkle new ideas. And because people have different strengths, people have different characters and personality and, and their experience, we come up with new ideas, creativity and efficiency. That's the very important why diversity and inclusion is even more important in nowadays, commercial entity and even for a country level. Yeah, we're talking with Kitty Lee, who is the Deputy General Manager of Fleshman Hilliard. They've just done a, a, a real amazing and wide-ranging survey called DE&I Decoded APAC. Uh, talked to more than 5,000 interviewees across 10 countries uh, looking at DE&I. And this, this new report sets out a framework for corporations to follow, uh, to act more relevantly and authentically in this DE&I space. But before we get to that framework, tell us about some of the top line um, observations that you came away with in this report. Well, first and foremost, that is like myths there are misperception or perception we want to find out whether they are true or not is DEI is not that important in Asia Pacific. It might be a concept more talk about in the Western world, but is it really not important in Asia Pacific? This is the core we want to find out, break the myths. Mm. And from the data it's obvious. We see DEI is very wanted, is <laughs> in everyone's hearts across Asia Pacific. And I was amazed by the data, 84% noting that they advocate for at least one DNI topic from the respondents. So it's not just something, oh, it's the Western, we don't care about it, mm. but it is really, really important. Only 1% respondents said they have never heard of this concept. Wow. Yeah, I mean, just to add to that, Kitty, there are some extraordinary stats. As you mentioned there, APEC consumers, 90% of them expect companies to act and communicate about DE&I issues. But of that 90%, only 3% said they ever remembered getting any information on the topic whatsoever. <laughs> so there is clearly a massive a gap, big right? gap yeah. there, Kitty, right? I mean, what, what was your, some of your findings on that? Why is there such a gap? Yeah, and on top of that, 83% um, expect DE&I leaders um, in Asia Pacific. So I think that's a fundamental um, situation. <laughs> Um, people look at uh, the DE&I might be something we take for granted, and it is not. We need to talk about it. We need to raise awareness about it so people can act about it. So it's not something that, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's not okay if you don't, like, 
raise awareness and we 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 communicate as a team we understand each other it's always the the three phases we 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 understand each other and then we come up we, we've identified the needs and then we take action mm-hmm. and i think usually people just um understate the need to talk about it to communicate about it and take take assumptions that oh this is okay it is not okay kitty just to add to that if i may because 90 percent is a huge number yeah and they they expect to talk about race ethnicity and gender these are three key areas that they want to be communicating about in the workplace from these respondents did you get any sense of why why they feel that this is so important to discuss, communicate about in the workplace? Well, before we get into the why, I also want to highlight in our research, we also find out most of the respondents are not comfortable to talk about DEI topics in ah. workplace environment. I think hmm. that's very interconnected, so they are not comfortable talking about it, so they don't talk about it. And it's like a cycle, so the DNI is not being communicated in the corporate world or workplace. We need to make a change, and setting up like guidelines and policy. Um, really, as a corporate, we need to lead the change um, from top down and also bottom up. And so, there's a lot we can do, and we are we have been assisting some of the, our clients to look at their DNI issue internally and what they can do. And it honestly, it can't change overnight. It has to be an ongoing, um, sustaining process. Every, yeah. every action counts. But Kitty, let's get into this structure of, of what, um, the, the framework, I should say, for what corporations can do, how they can follow uh, in the APEC region to act more relevantly, to be authentic, to meet the needs of, of these 90% of people that, you know, that, that want to have this information available uh, in their workplaces and have a good DEI program. What does the framework look like? Well, I think, well, first of all, we need to recognize Asia is such a diversified market. Yeah. We're yeah. having 4 billion people, 2,000 languages. And looking at Singapore, it's such a diversified city, a lot of different culture, ethnicity, it's, it's great. But as I said at the beginning, everyone has their different needs, experience, mm. and background. So it's very important to get together and understand each other. I want to highlight some, some of the very interesting um, data in, about Singapore. Um, well, Singapore, you know, is a very rich cultural and religion is very diverse. And so you would you would naturally assume DNI is such a like easy topic on people like understand, um, get familiar about it. However, sorry to say, you rank number eight across the ten markets in Asia Pacific. It- is that right? <laughs> yeah. So pretty um, low on that list, huh? <laughs> yeah, so when we ask our respondents, um, are you familiar with the DNI topic? Only 67% of the respondents say they yes, they are familiar. So it's still the concept of DNI is still having a mixed level in Singapore. Hmm. And that's I, I, yeah, that's, that's yeah, fascinating because I, I, I would expect as I said, Singapore is such a diversified culture. People are like, yeah, of course, I understand that. And this result really strikes me. <laughs> wow. Well, it, it, it strikes me the contradiction that you're alluding to there, Kitty, so well, which is respondents, including Singapore, want to talk about and discuss diversity, equity, and inclusion. They want it included in corporate communication. But on the flip side, they're not comfortable talking about it. Mm. So where do we find this middle ground? What strategy can we use in the workplace to, to reach this comfortable middle ground? Well, think positively, flip the lens. That means there are a lot of things we can do um, to upper the level. And among the 18 topics we ask our respondents, um, the top three areas that Singaporean wants to address to see the most is racism, discrimination in general, and discrimination against people with disabilities. So I think these 
like commonly we, we are hearing from respondents they want to see change and, mm. and so so that's well as i said it's an ongoing journey it won't change overnight but maybe we can start with these three topics that pre- people really want to see change yeah uh, kitty the the um, report that you've put out and i'm putting the link right now in our facebook live um, our Facebook live chat so folks can actually go and and look at that report but you know it does cover as you rightly mentioned a very broad part of the world where there are many different cultures business cultures and otherwise but I think fundamentally everybody recognizes that there needs to be some change some positive change in in the amount of diversity in companies and and the the equity the inclusion aspects of it like these are some uh, in this day and age, coming to be basic human rights, I think that most people would think about in terms of business. Are you still seeing a lot of pushback from certain, either certain types of businesses or certain, um, you know, uh, certain countries, pushback against including uh, some sort of DEI program? Mm. Well, I have to say, our report is a very, very useful conversation opener. It is the start of the journey, um, and I I I can't decla- I, I can't say no. Um, we see some hesitation. Why we need to roll out DNI? What shall mm. we do? A lot of question marks within corporation. But these data really help us to take the conversation to the next level and to rethink the needs. How organizations, even public sectors, can set their DNI strategy. Mm. So data is the vet. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do have 36% of your respondents who have said they expect employee training on this subject. Would that be step number one? Start the dialogue that way. Have a leader coming, a trainer coming and discuss these issues. Would that be the way forward? Definitely, definitely. That's, that is a must first step. But at the same time, I would also advocate organizations to listen to their employees. Um, What are their needs? Because fundamentally, um, we need to create relevance and resonance. Um, Trainings, yes, of course, it's an education journey, but what are you going to educate? Are they listening? Are they really getting messages from these sections? I think there's a lot to do. Fantastic. Uh, Kitty, uh, the report really goes into great detail, country by country, the overview, the snapshot, and then country by country. If somebody wants to get more information from you about the report, about, you know, DE and I in their own company, how can they contact you? I'll go to our company website, send me an email. We have a, well, thanks again. This is a global initiative. Um, We have a dedicated true global intelligence team. They are very superb in research and analytics. And working together with our true Mosaic practice, they are specialized in DE&I matters. And myself here in Hong Kong, but also I work across Asia Pacific with the teams. So definitely send us an email. We will on it. Well, thank you so much to Kitty Lee, Deputy General Manager of Fleischmann Hilliard. The report is DE&I Decoded APAC, uh, survey of more than 5,000 interviews across 10 countries about DE&I. Thanks for being with us today on Money FM 89.3, Kitty. Thank you so much.